Tonight I'll be sharing with us all a caption warfare praise. Psalm 49. I'll read verse 1. This is fine, don't worry. You can leave the rest. Psalm 149. Psalm 149. The Bible speaking is a praise to God. Praise to God for his salvation and judgment. Praise the Lord. He says, sing to the Lord a new song. And, and his praise in the assembly of the saints. He said, let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them sing. Let them praise his name with a dance. Let the praises, let, let them sing praises to him with a timbre and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their bed. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two edges swore in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and the punishment on peoples to buy their kings with chain and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the judgment written this honor of all his saints praise ye the lord tonight i'll be sharing with also that caption warfare praise i'd like you to know that praise is a language in the spirit that communicates something to god and bring a reality here on heart the Lord spoke to me as I entered the church to sit. And then the Lord spoke to me and he said, It is not every battle in life that require that we pray. There are battles that require that we sing. There are battles that require violent prayer. There are battles that require the approach of praise. is a language in the spirit remember i told us this and bring back a reality real on earth there is a dimension of praise that communicates warfare signals to heaven and god come down in return to begin to fight your battle there are situations that are difficult that rust that require an approach of evil to dismantle Many of us will have possibly been praying and yet not getting answers. It might be that God is saying, your prayers are acceptable, but your prayer cannot actually bring back the reality of the things you want. Can I tell you something, people, when you are fasted, hallelujah, when you fasted and prayed, and you did that for long and yet nothing is changing switch God inhabits the praises of his people Psalm 22 number 3 what we are doing in the church this month is not fun it is a reality that all of us will testify in no small time everyone here will look back at their pouring of heaven over by the life at the end of this month and we will be amazed at ourselves what the Lord has done. There are battles who fight with small gun. There are battles who fight with AK-47. There are battles who fight with double barrel. There are battles who fight with gun. There are battles who fight with bomb. There are battles who fight with jet, having the bullet in it. There are battles who fight where you have worship. Every battle does not require the same approach. So also in the spirit, every battle does not require the same approach. There are battles that it takes only the presence of God and the mystery of praise to demystify. There are mysteries behind every battle. That only the 
lifting of praise will demystify there are battles Psalm 55 and verse 22 they say cast your burden upon the Lord he will sustain you, he will never suffer the righteous to be moved how do we put our battle to God most times I can tell you something we can communicate our battle to God in prayer but praise is transferring our battle to him prayer can be a communication to communicate our challenge to God but when you sing in warfare praise it's a direct proof that you are saying oh God I'm not sufficient take over the battle praising God in warfare is simply saying father take the battle Many of the proud that I can fast 21 days to bring down any demon. It's possible. It's a reality in this kingdom to pray and have change of story. But I've met people in my life who have fasted and prayed, who have given seed and yet nothing is happening. And you begin to wonder, is God not hearing them? It might be God might be telling you it's time to switch. God keep remembering me something here. Sometimes ago, one of the wife of our bishop was attacked. And I love this bishop so much. From the depth of my heart, God knows I love. Even till now, I all know with the totality of my being. Now you see, I'm have my shots coming in followership. But God could see through the integrity and the innocency of my heart that I love. I was in the revelation and the Lord spoke to me and he said the wife is sick and I began to find in service the bishop wife was not actually coming to church anymore so immediately I knew what God told me was true so I began to pray oh God suck out the hand up. at the point I switched to praise and I was dancing every morning I would lock my door I would dance for 30 minutes I was dancing. I think on the 17th or the 18th day, I removed all my clothes and I began to dance. You see, the bishop didn't even know I was praying for her, the wife. Even the wife did not know I was praying for her. The Lord showed me I was moved with compassion and I began to pray. On the 17th or the 18th day, I removed my dress completely before our God made me. And I was dancing, rolling inside the inside the little room. Then I remember, and the Lord told me, "Stop." He said, "She shall be fine. She will not only be fine. A social program, she will be there, and truthful to the word of the Lord. At that particular program that the Lord told me, the bishop wife was there." She has not fully recovered in court. It was showing on her face that she's also recovering from actually an issue. But she was well. There are battles that will never go. There are battles that will never leave you until you learn and engage the mystery of what you are There are battles that will never leave you until you learn to engage the mystery of warfare praise I'm praying for everyone who said the Lord that said me tonight that everything that will do difficult for you the Lord Jesus will take over tonight you can say let me touch your own mind with the Lord as well in the spirit to pray for someone here there are mountains that are too difficult for you to climb because of the numbers of battles that surround that battle we have been longing to climb but the hand that are close the Lord begin to open my eyes right now I see in a local vision somebody here is trying to climb but what hand is holding you down as you are climbing what hand is holding you down as you are climbing I guess you want the hand that leads you to so far for a good thing and take it Every evil hand that has you will not 
we transfer our battles to God. But when something about warfare praise, if you study Psalm 149 very well, he said, Let them rejoice in their makeup as two. He said, Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Somebody that has a battle, God begin to give a commandment. He said, Do you want to actually engage in warfare praise that will bring about a dimension of result that you have been looking for? Verse 2 begin to teach us. He said, Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. When you are in the season of warfare, when battles are too difficult, it is difficult to actually be joyful. Joy is a language in the spirit that mocks the enemy. A very funny story. I had a sister of mine. When I gave my life to Christ, coming from a Muslim background, there were many battles against me. They used something on my tummy that pierced my tummy. The sky is still there. But I was never hungry. I returned home at a particular time. Every member of the family gathered around me and said, Would you want to put us to shame? Because you say you are not going to actually follow us as being a Muslim again. Now you are a Christian. I was laughing. Ordinarily, what they need, what they actually know that if they do that kind of a thing to me, there will be a fight. I was insulted. I was laughing. I was maligned, humiliated. I was laughing. When I was going, the money they were supposed to give, the money they were supposed to give me, they didn't give to me. I was laughing. One of my sister got angry and looked at me. And he said, With all that they have done to you, is your only love you will laugh. I still did not reply. I was laughing. When your enemy rose up against you terribly and they find you in the state of joy. Joy is a joy is a weapon against the enemy to tell the enemy you cannot be defeated. Sahandaku. It means you can lose. He said it doesn't matter what you do, I will sustain my joy. Joy is a sign to the enemy to make the enemy know I cannot be defeated. Joyful in the presence of challenges when your enemies see you, they begin to wonder what kind of a manner of man or a woman is this. You see, the things that want to steal your joy wants to steal God away from your situation because, in the presence of God, is a fullness. to your enemy that you still carry divine presence. No money in your pocket but yet you are relaxed. They fight you with everything possible but yet they, could, they still see you laughing. Sometimes ago at like the old church I was staying in the shop of somebody and I left my two phones. A Samsung phone and one of my tab that does this. And something happened. Somebody came into the shop and took my phone, took the tab, stole the, stole the thing at the same time. And I was to take a class that day. It was those days I used to take adult lessons because both of the people in church those days could not write or read. They couldn't write English nor read, but they, they could understand because some of them speak Pidgin. So when you speak English to them, they understand. But they could not read or write. So I needed some people to actually form to be part of our committee and I needed them to know how to read or write so we got the board and I was teaching them how to read or write two letter words, three letter words I was teaching them so we had a class that night when they stole my phone so I said okay all of you that are ready for the class would you come let's teach he said no sir he said daddy go and rest they stole your phone today you should not be happy <laughs> and I, I can't reply them I said it was my phone this stole. It's not me. I bought the phone. The phone didn't buy me. Those 
two phones were expensive, truly. But I hold the phone, the phone didn't hold me. When they see my phone and it's taking away my joy, something is wrong. I am the owner of the phone. The phone does not own. Oh, they own me. It was a beautiful class, I taught them. Many of them started reading from there. All to the glory of God. Now, some in warfare praise, it begins with something. He said, let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. It is difficult to be happy and retain your joy in the midst of trouble. But it's a mystery in this kingdom that no matter what happened to you, keep your joy. Philippians chapter 4, number 4, Paul began to teach. He said, rejoice again and I say, rejoice. Meaning sustain your joy. No matter the problem, no matter the challenge, you don't have a job, sustain your joy. You don't have a car, sustain your joy. You don't have a house, sustain your joy. No matter what is missing in your life, sustain your joy. It doesn't matter what is happening or what is what is not working around me, my joy is intact. Sustain your joy. Let, the, let, let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. It is then they can move to verse 3. Psalm, 4, Psalm 4, 1, 49. It is then they can move to verse 3. He said, Let them praise his name with a dance. Dancing is a must in welfare praise. Anytime welfare praise is sung, dancing is a what? When you are joyful in your maker. When you rejoice in your maker and you are joyful in your king, one thing is sure, it doesn't matter what is happening, let there be a dance. In warfare praise, joy is one. Rejoicing is one. Sustaining your joy is two. Number three, it's a must that you dance. And in dancing, you move forward. He said, let them sing praises to him with a timbre of our heart. And that's why we need to put on our tambourine, our drum, our organ, our keyboard, and whatever we have. And then we put it together to make a melodious sound where we rejoice and we are joyful and we are dancing and we are singing. When God sees this requirement, look at what will happen in verse 4. He said, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. God was not looking for their problem to solve in court. God needed to take pleasure in them first. When you fulfill this requirement, you are directly telling God, I am empty, but come to help me. Naked I am, come to help me for dress. Helpless I am, come help me. He said, for the Lord, take pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Only the people that are actually humble to fulfill this requirement will enjoy the salvation of God. You are rejoicing. You are joyful. Even in the midst of the trouble. You are coming before the Lord with dancing. Considering that your heart strength is not met. You are coming to rejoice before the Almighty God in dancing. Not considering that your job has not landed. You are considering, you are not actually considering whatever the warfare that is actually around you. You are suspending all of them. You said, I lay it before God at the altar. I would rather celebrate. You said now, the Bible says you are humble. The Bible says you are meek. And it will beautify you with salvation. Verse 5 gave us a commandment. He said, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their bed. in their mouth every warfare praise that must guarantee result after rejoicing after joy after dancing and making melodious sound with our timbre and harp must be battered in high praise I want you to listen to me at this junction Fear praise is not a gentleman praise. It's not the praise where you just lift up your hands. Oh Lord, my God. When I wonder, those are good, also. But that's not giving 
that's not communicating the signal to heaven that you need God to come and fight I have seen the Lord's goodness his mercies and compassion I have seen the Lord's goodness hallelujah praise the Lord oh Lord you are high praises communicate the signal to heaven that is time to fight and when that is done something will happen that is let the praise of God in their mouth and the two against sword in their hand when the high praises go down sword come in your hand and what will happen? Verse 7. He said to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the people. Verse 8. He said to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters. Verse 9. He said to execute on them the judgment that is written. He said, This honor have all the saints. Praise the Lord. High praise. Call God to invite. No gentleman praise. Let me give you one example and we'll close. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles 20. I'll read from verse 1, maybe verse 1, 2, 3, then I will jump to 19. He said, It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them beside the Amorites came to battle against the old suffered three persons gathered together three nations put themselves together to fight one person Vasu. then some came and told Joseph saying a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea from Syria and they are in Asazo Tama which is Adir verse 3 and Joseph had feared and said himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah even the, the leader of the country feared out of his fear he proclaimed a fast that everybody in the nation let fast three nations are coming against us at once he said are there enemy that are gang up against you in their numbers that look as if they are, they are too great for you what do you need to do? Switch to praise. What fear prayer might not do the job at that time? Oh, I call that fire. Consume now. How many did you want to consume? Is it Moab? Is it Ammon? Is it the Amorite? Three nations gathered against a particular nation? No matter the strength. Look at the nations around us. They are not as large as us. But if they actually all the nations around Nigeria conspire together to fight Nigeria, Nigeria will come. Household wickedness, community wickedness, foundational powers, enemy of progress, enemy at the verge of breakthrough. All of those combined together to just fight you at once, sir. Don't pray. Don't, don't, don't waste your time praying. Switch to prayers. But let's move further. That's all. So Judah gathered together to seek ask, to ask help from the Lord. And from the city of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Joseph has stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O oh Lord of our fathers, you are not in you are, you are not God in heaven. Are you not sorry, are you not God in heaven? Do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? In your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you. Are you not our God who drove out who drove out the inhabitant of this land bef before you people of Israel and gave it to the descendant of Abraham your friend forever 
and they dwell in it and build you a sanctuary in it for your name saying if disaster comes upon you sword judgment pestilence or famine we will stand before this temple and in your presence for your name is in this temple and cry out to you in our affliction you will hear and save us i think if nigeria can apply this principle there will be peace we are praying in love in this country look as if our prayers are not working yes god is working but if you want instant judgment nigeria needs to listen for everyone who will be in any authority that is hearing this or you might hear this later listen to me i give you counsel free of charge if nigeria will be humble to go on their knees and will proclaim a tale of fast and will be humble in not of fast and tongue to the sanctuary that god has given us in this season i'll tell you something something with on He said, Now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Matia, whom you will not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, re rewarding us by coming to throw, to throw us out of your possession, which you have given to us to inherit. Verse 12. Our God, will you not judge them? Now he began to remind God about this covenant. But let's go to verse 19. Let's jump because of time. Let me read verse 18. He said, And Joseph bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping. Look at verse 19. Everyone, and now take a look at this. Verse 19. They, the Levites of the children of the quarter and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with what? with voices loud and high did you see that? with voices loud and what? and high high praises with a voice that is loud it is inviting God to a fight Saying, we are giving to the heavens the signal for a fight. So this we are doing, we are not only worshiping you, but we are calling you for a fight. Come down and clear your enemies. Oh Lord, come down and manifest your power. Oh Lord, come down and manifest your power. Who knows that song? Oh Lord, come down. And manifest your power, oh Lord, come down. Man. Somebody like blessing that is gentle cannot sing that song. It's not for gentle. Oh, so kale, wafia barare ha. So kale, holua, wafia barare. It's not a it's not a voice that is gentle at all. It's not a voice that it you see you cannot sing that kind of a song with a low tone. You are saying, Oh God, come down, manifest your power. Meaning, oh God, come down to this situation and scatter your enemy. High praises is a signal to everyone that communicates what fear signal. Pam 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 pam. It's time to fight, and the host of heaven will reply and clear the enemy. Don't forget what we read in Psalm 149. He said, Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand. When the praises is high, sword is in your hand. When the praises is high, sword is in your hand. Casco Tahanda Sekatebo Undia. Now let's look at verse 20. After they sang with voices loud and high. Look at verse 20. So, so they arose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tapa. And as they went out, Joseph stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. You inhabitant of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. 
when he had and when he had consulted with the people he appointed those who should sing to the lord who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying praise the lord for his mercies endured forever verse 22 now when they began to sing and to praise the lord set a bushment against the people of ammon moab Montia, who had come against judah and they were what defeated did you see that there? they became defeated that come again now look at this the lord set a bushment that the people that actually wanted to kill the people they began to keep themselves there was confusion in their knees that made them to begin to kill themselves. Can I pray for someone here tonight? As we go before the Almighty God dancing tonight, every gang cup of the enemy against your life. It doesn't matter the name, it doesn't matter where they are from. I see confusion in their cup in the name of Jesus. Your enemy will begin to kill themselves for the sake of the name of Jesus. I pray for someone who said the Lord say, Amen. Every one of wickedness that has vowed that you will not lift up your head. Every limitation in your family that, that, that has vowed that your head will not be lifted up. I speak by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Those vows are destroyed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. If I say no, man, let's go. 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 Man, let's and when they are when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syria, they had to destroy one Asakanda Baraka. The enemy were destroying one Asakanda Kombo Alaka. As you sing and dance in high places tonight, go on the cross of the hand of your God. As you begin to go on and sing and dance before the Almighty God in high places tonight, the Lord will begin to make your enemy to destroy themselves. I touch your own name with the Lord of the Lord. Every enemy of this church will begin to destroy themselves. very high now look at i love verse 24 he said when judah came to the place looking when judah came now they wanted to come and see their enemy overlooking the wilderness they saw that was the multitude that they were what dead bodies falling on the heart look at what that book he said no one he said no one no one did what escape none of them all the three countries all the army of the three countries who gathered together to fight Judah none of them escaped none none Akasokamba now I want to believe that what God used in that place was a mass bomb the 
person just came down and cleared them that the one that wants to escape said, the bomb cleared the person. But if it is actually gone, you know, if he's killing them one by one, one will have escaped. One will just pretend as if he has died. When the gun has finished, he will stand up. But this one, there was no reason. There was no there was no escape route. The bomb came at the time. They killed themselves and they got wiped out. I pray for you tonight. None of your enemies will escape tonight. You are not saying amen. If your enemy can be the Lord that you are calling God to fight, I pray for you tonight. None of your enemies will escape tonight. The enemy will not wait for you to escape tonight. The enemy will not wait for you to escape tonight. The enemy will not wait for you to escape tonight. The enemy will not wait for you to escape tonight. The man that not to press the button of praise, especially for welfare, fear that man. So la handa ka. Verse twenty five, and I'll and I'll stop there. When Joseph and his people came to take away the spoil, all the, when all of them were dead, they were looking at them, confirming them dead. And all that they came to fight you were with became their possession. Are you saying that? We, we call this in the spirit the law of substitution. The law of what? The Lord Ayako Sutalaba. You can also call this transfer of wealth. You will not need to fight, you are just there. God kill your enemy and carry their possession and gave it to you. Have you not read in Isaiah? He said the weight of the sinner is laid off for the just. There are people that need to go so that their weight comes to you. It's a mystery in this kingdom called transfer of wealth. The same thing happened in the land of Egypt. He said you will not let them go empty. You read, you read that? In Exodus chapter 12, 13, 14. He said you will not go empty and they, they brought the gold and they were giving it. They were giving it to Some people need to have an example. Some people to have sense and drop the money. Salon do. Kararara is a law in this case. Don't worry. We are going to have a conference where transfer very soon. You are going to understand what I'm talking about. Where slap will slap pa. You know, there are some of you that have given the money that it's not as if you want to give the money. But you just know that if you don't give this money, something will happen. How many of you have been there before? You will not you say this is my last cup of oh God. Oh God. He said, would you drop that money? Uh, let's not go there. Now let's go. Very interesting. He said, and Joseph and his people came to take the way the spot and they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies. Precious jewelries. Are you saying that? Precious jewelries which were stripped off from themselves more than they could carry the way they were there three days gathering the spoil because they were so you see imagine the gold you will gather for three days is not a yoke three countries gather to come to fight a, a smaller country and go kill all of them and they gather the, and they gather the spoil for three days now let me say this when you transfer your battle to God and God fight your battle and God kill your enemy, one thing is sure, you will become richer. Believe me. If you have a shop and you have somebody that is striving with you in the shop and they begin to fight you that you must not sell, when God clear them of what will happen, won't you sell more? If your enemy is a teacher, you are a teacher and he's fighting you. Someone, someone, you saw that you are smart and you might take over his position. And God remove the person. Wouldn't they promote you? There is a mystery in this kingdom that after every battle is won, a dimension of wealth is released to you. The very first time I saw God get the witches for my sake, 
10 persons came to church without invitation. Yeah. Yeah. You move into a new dimension of abundance. So, if you want to romance your enemy, it's your fault. God will never kill an enemy you will never invite him to come and kill. It is an invitation of heaven that kills your enemy. If, if these people decide not to call on God, they will have remained like that and possibly they will have consumed them. The enemy you will never invite God to fight. God will watch you deal with it. He said, deliver me from my strong enemy for they are too much for me. When, you're, when God delivers you from your enemy, takes you to a new dimension of abundance it is an enemy that makes you to farm where it's hard yes it's an enemy that subject people to poverty an enemy simply means one that opposes the good interest of another but when your enemies are destroyed abundance is inevitable it's inevitable most especially if it is God that destroyed them When God destroy your enemy, you move to a realm of abundance. Number two, when God destroy your enemy, you move to a realm of dominion. A realm of what? Everybody that had the story of how those three countries were destroyed, they didn't go to fight anymore. They have common sense. Say, ah, three countries gathered together and against you now. Do you know what happened to them? They fought themselves to the point that all the good that they went with, the story become headline everywhere. Is that so? La la go see at her. Somebody slap you now and the the person slap you, you just look at the person and the person just dry and the person died did you make headline news they say see that pastor something happened in Duse one time maybe I've said this story before for many of you who are not here at that time in the house I was staying then we used to pay Nepal bill in the days when Mita was just coming out and dead the Nepal bill was outrageous 5,000 that time was our heavy money I know person who were actually in our church that time there were any 8,000 in a month. So 5,000 at that time was much. And something happened. They would tell me to pay 5,000 every month and the money was not convenient to me because I did not even have it. So I cried to the Almighty God, somebody who was happened, who happened to be a cousin of a minister used to bring, at the time where we want to pay, the person would bring 5,000 to me. So 6,000. This woman would drive a jeep and come to do say she was giving me 5,000 every month. So, once they bring the money, I will not touch the money. I will go and give for Nepal Bill. Oh, glory to God. We are passed through some things. See, I'm happy today that I've passed that realm. I'm happy. So, at the time, something happened. The woman travel abroad or something. Please, can we put out that fan? Now, because the woman travel abroad, I can't remember what really happened at that time. I don't know. Maybe the woman travel abroad or something, and then the money did not come as expected at that time. So I could not pay. The money was delayed. Yes. So I could not pay us at the time I was supposed to pay. I was supposed to pay. So I just discovered that there was no light in my room. When I saw that there was no light, I said there's no point to go and tell them. So when the woman brought the money, I hated the money. For a whole month there was no light. And for, for some of you are still in a house where you need to contribute money for bill. The moment you do not pay for a month, it accumulates. They will be accumulating it so somehow the bill became accumulated they don't care if somebody in that company has been disconnected see, the authority will not care what they are bringing to you is what they will bring to you you see in nigeria corruption is even fighting the electricity it's not what you use it's what they feel they bring so because they disconnected my life somehow the bill did not even reduce the bill even increase and the next bill they brought for them each person has to pay 11 11 000. and i was already disconnected 
So the elderly woman in that compound said, Pastor, what's wrong with you? You will not pay the bill. I said, I've been disconnected. And I'm not coming. I'm not, and I don't want you to reconnect it. I've been like this for 30 days and I'm enjoying it. In the house, I don't go to It's not as if I like darkness, but there's no need. Don't connect. I've already eaten the money. They said, no, it's not done. They brought the, they brought the bill. We must pay. I said, but I, I can't pay for what I did not use. Since you did not seek my consent to disconnect. So you should not come and collect money from me. They said, no, a pastor should not talk like that. You have to pay. I did not answer them. And you know one thing about me? When I'm really angry at you, I don't reply. The woman will talk, 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 I will just walk. There some women at the cross of the road when I'm coming, they'll be insulting me. He doesn't care. He said, I've been used to the system for long. So I'll just pass my thing. But I've, used, I've eaten the money. So if you insult me for what I've eaten, it's not, it's not a crime. Is that so? The apple is in my tummy now. But it's not. So one day, I came back from church. And I sat in front of the mechanic there. One of them died two months ago, sir. One of those guys I sat with that morning. I remember. So I sat with them that day. And then. It was in the afternoon, so I sat there. The woman came very angry. And she saw me there, and the woman began to insult me. And if you insult me, I don't I don't be bad. But if you insult my wife, I'll fight with everything I have. Or you insult my parents. Free of charge. I'm giving you information free of charge. But I understand. Insult my wife. I can offer you slap. No man is gentle when it comes to the matter of heart. I'm not somebody that will actually grow. Now the Bible says it is a son that is foolish that brings shame. Is that so? I'm not foolish. I'll not be bringing shame to anybody around me. Am I sensible? If you insult my parents, I won't take it lightly. So because the woman was elderly, the woman insulted my mom. Insulted and insulted. Ah! It didn't pain me. So I bowed down my head like this. It didn't pain me. But I don't want to insult because it was an open feed uh, crusade. People were plenty. It was a mechanic workshop. A lot of persons were there. So I bowed down my head. I did not want to reply. As I raised up my eye like this to look at the woman, let God be true and all may be lie. I stand on the altar of the most high God, I tell you the truth. The woman was standing like this. Afternoon around 1 20 p well, 1 20 in the afternoon. Something raised the woman like this up from the floor. Everybody saw it. Suspended the woman, suspended the woman like this and landed the woman on the floor. When the woman landed, when the woman landed on the floor, everybody shouted, Ha, ah, Pastor. I said, I did not do anything. He said, What kind of a prayer would you pray? He said, Oh God, raise the woman up. Oh, suspend. Are you fighting wrestling? He said, What kind of okay, how do you want to pray that kind of prayer? Someone else I'm talking about it. How do you want to pray that kind of prayer? Say, Oh God, raise the woman. Oh, suspend it. No, no, no. no. You can, there's no prayer formula for that. I might say something here. There's no pay, there's no way in the Bible that that even recorded there is a scripture you press for that to happen. But God knows how to deal with your enemies. Since that time, he sent a signal to everybody in that community that this guy is a pastor true true. When God deals with your enemy, he takes you to a realm of dominion. People believe you true true. Say that guy. God did so I do through. A family came to church because of that encounter. They became about drama for free for long. Israel. They said, huh? Pastor, ha, ha. they became about drama for free. They said, sir, we know what happened. <laughs> we know. Even that the family are not coming to this church. When their son got sick, sometimes uh, two months ago, it was me they still come and look for. They said we do not understand again. No. I went to the hospital, I said the name of Jesus. Second day they discharged them. I saw the man yesterday was only me in his car. You see, there are things that God needs to do to validate that you are truly a child of God. Amen. You need to set boundaries. It is called the law of dominion. 
When God fights your battle, takes you to a realm of abundance. When God fights your battle, takes you to another realm of dominion. Another realm of dominion. Say that guy, don't go there. Don't go there. Number three, when God fights your battle, I'll stop there. When we engage in warfare praise and God fights your battle, number three, one thing that God will do is that God will take you to a realm of rest. A realm of what? He'll take you to a realm of rest. And ever since that time, the woman began to greet me well. Anytime I'm coming to the compound, I put my hand in the pocket. Is it me that don't used to carry my Bible openly before? And I began to carry my Bible openly. Carry my Bible like this. They say, Pastor, welcome and say thank you. Only Christmas that I follow, God is my witness. The woman brought rice for me. He said, Pastor, I said, eat. I said, don't worry, I'll give my dog. When God delivers you from a enemy, he brings you rest. Rest. So why do you need to dance tonight? See your realm of rest. Amen. See your realm of dominion. And see your realm of abundance. Because when God will replace your enemy, He will take you to a realm of abundance, He will take you to a realm of dominion, and take you to a realm of rest. Can I tell you something? There is contention everywhere. Until you contend and win, you will not dominate. Dominion simply means your enemies are subdued. Rest simply means your enemy cannot hurt you. That prepares a table before me in the presence of my Meaning they can't hurt you. Something has changed language. Are you spending money and they are not taking your money to a wrong altar for them to go and test? Karasa. It means power, past power. Am I sensible here? So tonight we are going to dance. Let the high praise of God be in their what? In their mouth. If the praises is not high, it will not bring down warfare. Can I hear a statement to that? If it is just 10 minutes that we have, or 20 or 30 minutes that we have, make sure you dance. Can I say, man?